Yo, what's up guys, what's going on? Your good buddy Frank Daniels here. Today I am talking about abs versus the core. And I'm going to explain the difference between those two things. And you may have heard the terminology core thrown around a lot lately in fitness. You may not understand what the heck it actually means. Is the core, the abs, is the abs, the core, are they the same, are they different? What the hell is it? I'm going to explain that to you today. Before I go into that, I have a free report for you guys out there that want to get lean and jacked. It's called 7 Steps to Shredded. You can download that by clicking the first link in the description. At the end of this video, you'll see a pop-up and you can click that to download that free report. Let's talk abs versus core. And uh, three areas I just want to focus on. First is the function. Okay. Second, I'm going to give you some exercise type or exercise examples where you could be like, okay, that's an ab exercise or it's more focused as a core exercise. And then I'll tell you when and why you might do both of those. All right. So first off, let's talk function. Now, if we're going to talk abs, this is what everybody wants, right? Like everyone's talking about it. Okay. It's the hottest topic ever. Okay. Getting abs, right? So if we just kind of look at the chart right here, I mean, abs are what you can see for the most part. Typically, you think about your six-pack muscles. Those are the things when you think about somebody with good abs, they got a six-pack, right? You can see those things bulging out. Um, so you're thinking about superficial muscles. So what does that mean? That's muscles on the outside that you can see and not necessarily the underlying musculature underneath the stuff that you can see. So uh, your abs are more about aesthetics, right? Are they part of the core? Yes, okay, they function with the core, but you can have great abs and not necessarily have a strong core, where on the flip side, the core is more about function and performance. So as I said, you can have great abs, but have poor core strength and have limited performance. So if you think about the core, that's the underlying musculature under the stuff that you can see, right? The six pack muscles, the obliques underneath that stuff that interweaves, okay, with the spine, all right? And interweaves with those muscles on the outside. So certainly the abs that you see are part of your core as well. Um, but your core is wrapping around basically your entire midsection, kind of like a weight belt would. And you'll know you can feel your core when you take a big breath, okay, a big belly breath, and cough really hard. And what you'll feel is that all these muscles around this area activate and fire up. That's your core, right? So it's not just the stuff you see, okay? Most of the time we're thinking about abs, the stuff we see. We're not thinking that, you know, back muscles are involved with that, you know, deep musculature that attaches the spine. We're not thinking about those things. We just want to see aesthetics, right? So your core and your abs, even though they sometimes interact and work together, uh, sometimes spent, uh, they always interact and work together. You can certainly have very great abs, not have a strong core. On the flip side, you can have a very strong core, but not great abs, all right? So it's important to understand that. Um, let's talk about the type of exercises that you would see. So when you're thinking, I'm going to work abs, those are typically exercises that involve movement of the spine, really bending, right? So you're thinking about crunches, you're thinking about sit-ups, you're thinking about side bends, things of that nature. Are there other exercises where you don't bend that work the abs very well? Certainly they are, but most people, they say, hey, I want abs. You're thinking about doing exercise, exercises that look like they're bending the spine, so they're movement-based most of the time. Whereas core exercises generally are designed to keep your spine from moving. So basically to hold you in a very good posture and a very good alignment, and then what you do is kind of move around those. So, um, you know, we're thinking of exercises like planks, exercises like weighted carries, um, rollout, okay, where you might put your hands on a Swiss ball and roll out or a TRX rollout where your hands go above over your head, walkouts, things of that nature. Again, when for the most part, when your core is stable, this area doesn't move and you either move your limbs or you set up in like a planking activity. So again, the difference between core and abs, abs, typically move the spine, okay, side to side, front to back, right, usually forward, and core exercises typically are designed to keep the spine in one place. Again, if I do crunches and sit-ups, does it work my core? Definitely, just probably not as much or with not as much function or performance value as doing something that would keep your midsection in one place while you're doing exercise activity. 
All right. So let's just talk about when and why you would do both. Because we know that ab muscles are a hot topic for everyone, right? Everybody wants those. Um, you know, you would do generally sit-ups and crunches, right? Because you really want to focus on this area. It's important to note that you don't see no abs unless your diet is in really good shape. So you got to get the body fat, okay, the belly fat cut down so you can have great ab muscles. But if you have belly fat on top of that, you're not going to see it. So diet's a big part of abs as well. But if you want really good developed ripped abs, doing exercises like crunches, doing exercises like side bends, sit-ups, things of that nature are going to help make those things more pronounced. Again, are there other exercises? Definitely, I'm not naming them all, but I think you get the point. The spine bends, okay? Um, you're crunching, you're, get, you're trying to see this stuff, right? This stuff going on here, this stuff going on here. Um, so you do that when you want a really good aesthetic, right? When you do core work, well, you do core work because that helps with function. So core work is, is kind of like the baseline, right? So if you're a really good athlete, you want a strong core. But just in general, if you want to have a long, productive career in the gym, in the weight room, okay, so you can take care of your body and continue to do those things for a long time, you probably want to focus on core first because that will help uh, in itself to build stronger abs on top of that good base, but it helps with function in all other areas. So I would not recommend just focusing on abs, like having strong, really, um, you know, really good looking aesthetic abs and not having a strong core. Probably not a great idea. Uh, when would you not do abs? Well, over the course of time, the body can get banged up, especially if you're not working on mobility and flexibility and keeping those things. As you age, you're going to lose that stuff. So typically why you've heard within the last you know, 10 to 15 years or so, a lot of high performance coaches talking about, oh, you don't need to do abs, okay, you just work core, right? You just do core and you'll get abs. Okay? To a degree, this is true. If you're very lean, you're going to have an attractive midsection. You may not see very pronounced um, ab muscles if you're not doing crunches and sit-ups, um, but you're going to have an attractive midsection. You're going to see some of that stuff, just maybe not as much if you were doing focused ab work, right? So it's very important to have a strong core, but the reason that people talk about this is because um, for posture issues, right? So if you have bad postural alignment, if you're sitting like this, okay, you're in this big arch and your ribs are flared up, you have an anterior pelvic tilt, and a number of other issues that can come along from having a weak core, okay, from allowing your pelvis to shift left to right, okay, front to back, um, from having your spine out of position, your shoulders, having a weak core causes a lot of problems outside your midsection. So it could cause uh, shoulder problems, neck problems, hip problems, knee problems. So now when you're doing activity, if you're jogging, if you're playing sports, if you're lifting, this could be issues, right? So if you have poor posture, doing exercises that move your spine or crunch a lot, probably not the greatest idea. So for example, I like having abs. Uh, I try to stay lean as possible, but I'm not as focused on ab type exercises. I do them sparingly because I would rather do core exercises where I know I have better function and better performance over the long run and I'll take a little bit less abs okay, in the trade-off for better function, better posture. All right, so it's important to recognize what you're doing this stuff for. If you're a fitness model, a bodybuilder, things of that nature, you're going to need those abs. So whether or not your core is functioning well probably doesn't matter based on what you're trying to accomplish in the moment. But over the course of the long haul, um, your core is going to be very important. So core is going to help develop better abs in the first place. But if you're starting to get banged up, the real question you want to ask yourself is, is getting into a poor posture worth um, not being able to perform in a weight room, okay? Not being able to train, not being able to play sports. You're probably better off focusing more on core and less on abs unless it's something that you do professionally, bodybuilder, models, um, you know, physique competitors, things of that nature. This is way more important to them. I would not skip that ever, but it's important to know the difference in what's going on. If you're feeling banged up, okay, you're feeling jammed up, more than likely things that bend your spine are only going to contribute to worse problems, so you have to kind of figure out where your trade-off is if you want to do a ton of this stuff when you are banged up. And one of the things we say, if we got people at our gym here, Max Impact Training, if they come to us, they have got great movement, they can do more abs. They're not feeling any pain, no joint pain, no issues, um, they can do more abs. That stuff starts coming up, they can do less of this and more of this. All right, so 
There's definitely a difference between the two. Do they interweave? Okay. Are they somewhat the same thing? Certainly, but once again, you can have great abs okay, and not have a strong core. You can have a strong core and not see any abs at all. You're better off working from the core first. Okay. If you need to do ab exercises, you could do them as well. Just important to understand the difference between the two and when you might plug those things in. The most important factor in abs in general, this hot buzz term, everybody wants them, man. Everyone's talking about them is your nutrition. So you're not going to see jack unless you get your nutrition right. So uh, I hope this cleared up some questions for you guys, okay? When you may apply these things, when you may not, obviously having a great midsection is important to a lot of people, so we do not discourage that. Get your nutrition right, make sure you're doing the appropriate training for you, okay, and where you're at, and that's what it's all about. Guys, if you really enjoyed this video, head down below, like, leave me a comment, tell me exactly what you wanna see next, and of course, subscribe to this channel. Um, if you did not grab seven steps to shred it earlier, you will see it in the pop-up button here. Get that uh, mobile phone user's first link in the description down below. Guys, my name is Frank Daniels. Enjoy your day.